Welcome back to OT, the podcast. Hello. It's a podcast about watches, time, and how we spend it. Bam. I'm Andy Green. I'm Felix Schultz doing the audio inserts. How are you going? Uh, yeah, getting a bit silly to be honest, but I'm doing all right. Feeling the isolation? Yeah, pretty much. I did something silly this morning. What did you do? I stole my dad's Timex Q. Boom. Have you seen one of these in real life before today? No, I don't think I have. Okay, yeah, very interesting. Quite cool. It's a cool little watch. Yeah, yeah. Do you know how he ended up with it? Uh, no, tell me. I came home the other week and, and he, he, he yelled out, Andy, I want a time XQ. And I have no idea how he, how he heard about this watch because he's not, a watch guy, he? he's not at all interested in anything remotely close to watches. Yeah, sure. He saw it in your newsletter. Yes, right on time.substack.com. He's an early subscriber. Again, I'm not sure why. <laughs> he just likes me. He, he, I've never met him. He's a super fan. Yeah, okay. Let's not let's not do an introduction because it'll ruin the magic. Yeah, okay. But he saw the Time XQ and he said, "Can you get me one?" I said, "Look, they're a little bit tricky to get, but let's let's do it." And your dad's a hype beast. He's an absolute hype beast. Yeah, sure. Anyway, so I picked it up for him. Uh, realized upon picking up one for him that they're very cool. Yeah. Are, you, are you tempted to steal it permanently? Oh, look, I'll I'll wear it around for a little while. I mean, he'll he'll track you down. He knows where you live. He does. He's uh, he's aware. Yep. Sure. Uh, what else is going on? What have we got today? Who's 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 up on the? We on have the a watch. We have a watch matchmaker. Good friend of mine, Enrique, Enrique. from Mouchant. Ah, the man with the torches. The electric torch man. Yeah, Before we do though, how you been killing time with the isolation? Netflix, mate. What are you watching? Uh, a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I recently revisited a little a mini doco series called Seven Days Out. Which okay. Which is exceptional. It's it's a really cool premise. Uh, it takes like seven different events, and it starts seven days out from that event and goes through to that event going live. Mm-hmm. And they can be different things. Like there's a, uh, I want to say Chanel fashion show. Okay. Uh, I think maybe the last one that Lagerfeld was involved with or the one just after, I can't, haven't seen that one recently. Um, a dog show, the, the end of like a NASA probe uh-huh. mission, like before it jets into Jupiter. Uh, but the one that I particularly really, really like and always recommend to people is a esports cool tournament okay esports big at the moment yeah it's a weird thing like it's it's a um so it was done a couple of years ago this doc Mm. uh when it was a little more niche i think but so it follows like the american league of legends something 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 and it's it's wild it's a view into a, a different culture of certainly for me and for you i don't know if you're you know there Big gamer. Yeah, not, you know, there with a the headset all. and all that sort of jazz. Fortnites. Yeah, all that. Uh, but it's a really, um, it's interesting, even, A, it's interesting looking to a particular subculture. There's like a guy that's an LA Laker that bought a team and, but there's some no spoiler stuff in there that makes it, that turns it into like absolutely gripping human drama. Yeah, it's, wow. It's cool. What about you? What are you up to? Okay, well, I finished Tiger King on Netflix and decided that I need to be more productive with my life. Mm. So I've been doing a lot of... Uh, Run for president. Yeah. <laughs> 2024. Uh, so I've been doing audiobooks. Oh, yeah, nice. Interesting. Uh, haven't Self-help? Self-helpy vibes? No, not really. One's called The Power of Habit by a guy... Sounds like self-help. It is. Uh, by a guy called Charles Duhigg. And it's called The Power of Habit, Why We Do What We Do and How to Change. And it's, as an audiobook, I think it's much more manageable but it talks about things like habit loops and just the processes of you know and and the involvement that habits have on our daily lives and helping us make decisions and what we need to kind of work out and what we don't what are we talking about what's a habit loop what are, or like uh, give me a concrete example like is this like uh, quit smoking in seven days or uh what, so there's examples from like corporate america there's examples from like uh, alcoholics anonymous uh-huh. and basically they just deep dive into habits and and so the habit loop is sort of the thing that tri- triggers the habit what the actual action is and then what the reward is and everything we sort of do is for that reward at the end. So they use everything from like toothpaste to shampoo, foaming from um, this great example with uh, Alcoholics Anonymous where they talk about the belief of being able to get through this program is what really drives the success of the program because none of it should actually work and it's very there's, there's unconventional. No scientific basis or any sort of... None at all, but it's very heavily faith-based and not yeah. you know just religion but the faith of having all these people around you and having to go to these meetings for the first 90 days every single day to get through it. So mm. it's just a really interesting look at habits. It sort of sounds like, oh, like marketing or like it's sort of... Well, they use it. A marketer, I would get stuff out of this. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of companies have, have figured it out. I mean, the, there's an interesting uh, dive into toothpaste. And, yeah, right. you know, like, you know, like I think it was like the early 1900s, no one used toothpaste. And it was almost like a pandemic, not like we're in now, but 
they were worried that like they wouldn't have enough troops for the wars because dental health it was so poor huh. and so no one could figure it out and then a marketer figured out by kind of applying these principles of habit to toothpaste to yeah, get people right. to start using it so anyway that's one of the audio books cool. i've been doing so uh, I can't help but notice that we're uh, a little matchy matchy today. We are a little matchy matchy. Green bombers all around. Yeah, I've got a. Um, is this in honor? Did we did we plan this for? Our we often sync up. Mm, we often sync up. But you're wearing a your Martin Baker hat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you you got me one that I should have worn today. <sighs> next time, next time, next time. Uh, but that's this is not a coincidence. It's because uh, Enrique wants a pilot's watch. He does. Why don't we dive into uh, Enrique's story now? Enrique writes, hey, Felix and Andy, I'm looking for a pilot's watch or chronograph. The budget's up to 15K. That's US, so call it 23,000. 20, yeah, a bit more than... About 23,000. Tomorrow exchange will be rate, 25. Exchange rate's terrible. To, commer- to commemorate the completion of my pilot's license and also function as a daily wearer, both in and out of the cockpit. Mm. It, it doesn't actually have to be you know, exclusively aviation-themed, though functionally tailored to that use. Think mm-hmm. high legibility. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a plus. I'm a big fan of the Omega Speedmaster, mm-hmm. the Rolex Polar Explorer 2, mm-hmm. and the Stowa Flieger watches. Great choices, Enrico. Size, it's not a hard requirement, but no big pilots or anything of that kind. Think 38 to 42 millimeter is probably ideal. Good call. I think, you know, Enrique does make uh, a lot of comments around those bigger watches. You know, the Polar Explorer 2 is 40. I think the Omega Speedmaster is around that 40 as well, mm-hmm. 42. 42. Uh, and the Stowers similar. They, they've got the forty four, the big, the bigger one. Yeah, so you know it. It. Why don't I start with my my selection? Well, and well, you're already there. Let's go. I, um, I'll bounce over to you. Yeah, so please. I've I've picked a picked a handful of watches for Enrique based on you know what I've taken from this uh, from this email. The first one is the Bremont H four Hercules. Are you familiar? Oh, t- tell me more, Andy. Paint, so the, paint me a word picture. So the uh, the Hercules uh, came out late last year. Uh, with uh, with British brand Bremont, mm-hmm. uh, priced at just under seventeen thousand Aussie dollars, oh, so in the budget. Yeah, it's not even touching the sides of uh, of his budget. This was a limited edition that the brand did. I think it's three hundred pieces in total. I'm suggesting the steel model, which is one of seventy five, which is you know cool. It's got that X factor of a partnership, and the uh, the watch itself is is quite beautiful. T- tell me a bit about what's the partnership. What's the so the partnership is with the uh, uh, Harold Hughes. Uh, do you mean Howard Hughes? Howard Hughes, sorry. The Spruce Goose. The Spruce Goose. Did you, did Hughes, you watch sorry. that Simpsons episode? Where no. there's, yeah, I just think of Monty Byrne, Dev, get in the Spruce Goose. But anyway. The Spruce Goose. Yeah, so it's a partnership actually. between, uh, well, it's it's probably not a partnership. but it's a, Do you want me to talk about the Spruce Goose? Talk about the Spruce Goose. Spruce Goose is a giant plane. It's a big plane. Howard Hughes, he's the guy, you might know this, Andy, young buck. Green, uh, it was the Leonardo Scorsese film. The Leonardo Scorsese film, The Aviator, was yes. concerning how it is. He built a giant plane, the Hercules. Uh, the, the Hercules originally to for World War Two purposes to you know sort of move troops and tanks around. Turns out it was a bit more complex than that. Took him a bunch later to. Yep. It was it was an obsession project, and he made this massive plane. I think was it like a three hundred meter wingspan? It's I could big. Be it's making that up, but it was giant. It's it's, it's probably it. It's referred often to as the most important plane. Yeah, ever. and a whole lot of stuff came out of it, like avionics yep. and you know all this sort of jazz. And it was it. It flew for like ten seconds, three meters above the water, and never again. And it's sort of a. A glorious folly. Yeah, so look, the, the tie-in to the watch is that they've actually used birchwood veneer from the fus- fuselage. Fuselage? Fuselage. Fu- you talk plane good. F- fuselage. I know planes. Uh, in the uh, the rotor of the watch, which yeah, has a cool. clear case back, so yep. you can kind of see this propeller rotor yep. that's got this nicely uh, wooden finish. Yep. The front of the watch is brown, uh, so matches in with those sort of warm tones. It's got a, a GMT vintage-y. function. Yeah, a bit, GM- uh, bit, bit vintage-y. Has that GMT function, which is good for a pilot like Enrique, uh, and uh, I think well, that's a solid choice. Yeah, I think that's a good choice. Uh, Size wise, it's forty three though, Ooh, so it's a little you know. It's, it's a pretty little, thick. Those brand it ones is are, thick. Yeah, yeah, the triptych case. Yeah, it's it's my first choice. Okay, cool. So um, where were you thinking? Like that's a that's a pretty statementy sort of watch. I think that this is a big deal that he's celebrating, yeah, and yeah. I wanted to suggest something a little bit special. I've got something similar actually. Yeah, but you do. No, but but so what, what's next on your so list? So next on my list, uh, look. It's a it's a little bit of a safer option. The Rolex Sky Dweller. I'm saying stainless steel with the white gold uh, bezel, black dial. 
how does Enrique get one of these watches? Anyway, oh, the Black Dials is attainable. Okay, yeah, it's not impossible. Okay, it's he, a, it's a, he's he, he might be a little way off yet. completing his pilot's license. Put his name down now when he's done his fifteen thousand hours or yep. however long it is. He'll, he'll have it. Yep. Uh, look, Rolex as a celebration or marking milestone is a, is a classic option. Yep. Uh, size is forty two, so it's perfect. It's it's on the money for him. It has a you know GMT function with a really interesting. Uh, yeah, it's very technical, isn't it? Very technical. The yep. bi-directional bezel. Yeah, yeah. So the, it's the, the bezels. Um, it's sort of the, uh, not quite fluted. Like yeah, you call it fluted. Yeah. yeah, it's fluted, but it's it's it controls what the the, the, the crown does, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, controls the crown. So yeah. it, and both directions without yeah. you know obviously damaging the movement. So you can set the uh, the month with that. Mm, interesting. And so then you've obviously got. I think that's a solid choice. Yeah. Um, so we've got Bremont. Yep. We've got Rolex. Rolex. What else? Ah, here's a little bit of a fun one. Uh, the Zenith El Primero A384 Revival on a bracelet. Not just any bracelet. A ladder bracelet. A ladder bracelet. Wow. Is Andre, I, I don't know about... Uh, you, you know Enrique a bit better than me. Is he old enough to remember the glorious 70s? He's an old soul. So, okay, no, sure. but yes. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, and I think that I, as far as... This is a tribute watch. It's a tribute to the 1969. Yep. Uh, yeah, 1969. Yeah, the El Primero, I guess. El Primero, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not the first released one, but it's... No, but it's uh, a tribute to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's beautifully done. I yeah. think the only really major upgrade is the use of sapphire crystal uh, on the front and then a clear case back on the back to yeah, kind of really enjoy yeah. that movement. Yeah. It's uh, priced at about uh, 10900 off the bracelet. I don't have bracelet pricing, but I imagine a couple grand more. Yeah, so it's, sure. it's sort it's of half his, half his bracelet. He yeah. said legibility. The you, weren't, you weren't tempted to go the recently uh, released... Uh, cover Girl. Uh, cover Girl from my lovely friends at Revolution. Uh, no. Uh, anyway. Uh, so he mentioned legibility. Uh, the, the dial is like a matte white lacquer dial. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got black coating, counter uh, sub-dials on it. Yeah. It's, it's cool. It's unique. And it will take you from the cockpit to you know, a cocktail party. Yeah, exactly. Nice. I have one more. Hang on, I, I'm sorry, I've just got this image of Enrique in that watch in like a little funky 70s Cessna Beechcraft sort of... He's yeah, honestly yeah, an old soul. Yeah, like yeah, he's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yep. okay. I think he'd like that. Solid, okay. Now, yep. my last one... But for, not least. Forgive me, I've blown the budget just a tad. <sighs> hey, this was a pretty big budget too, wasn't it? 23. 23, yeah, okay. Aussie, we said. I'm at 25,600. <gasps> That's a little bit. It's Andy Green. 10% Maybe over. you can be really friendly with a retailer. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. This one is the Bulgari Opto Finissimo Whoa. Chronograph GMT. So he gets famous pilot's watch. Both those functions. It's not a pilot's watch. It's not at all a pilot's watch, but okay. it doesn't have to be. Again, okay. we're talking milestones, and I thought, what is a special watch with that yep. sort of money yep. that would kind of tick those boxes? Again, if you've seen it, it's got that grey dial that matches the sandblasted titanium case mm. and bracelet and all that. Mm. It's probably not that legible. No. But it, it it's it, very cool. It is the cool factor is through the roof. Yeah, the quality, like the design, it's a uh, it's amazing. That's yeah, that's a solid. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I think I think now I need to think about these. But yep. while but while I'm thinking, I might tell you what I what tell me what I've you've found got. for Enrico. Tell me. Um, no, uh, it's got to be now. I'm just going to go. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. So, like you, I've gone with four, and I've gone yep. uh, a mix from serious to playful. Okay. Uh, do you want to start at serious or playful first? Serious. Okay. Um, the classic choice, Breitling. Oh. Navitimer. Okay. B zero one. It's a big boy. It's forty three. I think. Yeah, forty three millimeters. So it's a larger, yep. larger case size. There are slightly smaller ones, but this is a size with a very in the house B zero one, which is one of the. Is the it a bracelet or a strap? Either or. Either or, okay. I, I didn't, like, honestly, I mean, honestly, there's a, a bunch of options there, you know, different dials and, yeah. you know, strap bracelet. I'd probably go the classic black dial on a leather um, leather strap, but, you know. It's and we're talking stainless steel yeah, mate. for this money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I should say uh, 12K Aussie. Okay. So definitely achievable. Um, I've actually gone really all over the shop. You've gone conservative wise. to start yeah, off with. Yeah, well, I mean, just because your budget's... Um, just because your budget's... Turn, turn around and show me your... Oh, oh, you show want me your selections because I don't know what... You want to see the watches? Yeah, show me the watches. Hang on, I've got them on my phone. Um, I've gone all over the shop with the budget. Uh, so I'm just pulling this up. This is really great for the listeners. How dynamic. 
Look at that. It's an oh, a classic. Yeah. yeah. Oh, did I need to just... Yeah, okay. So the Navitimer, for those of you listening at home... Yes. Um, it's a chronograph. It's sort of got a pretty legible dial, but the tricky thing about it is it's got a slider rule, does. which is one of those mathematical tools that nobody uses anymore. <laughs> or nobody knows what it does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, copy, like, I mean, back in the day before electronics and autopilots, it was useful like, on the fly, you know, working out how much fuel you had left, that sort of... Um, Computational navigational materials, um, but basically it's just cool. It's a, it's like your your Rolex GMT. It's one of the iconic sort of pilots' watches, and I think it's a really solid choice. Breitling do precious metal versions of the Navitimer. Yeah, they do. I've oh, Cooley Jets. I've gotten ahead of myself. You have gotten ahead Whoops. of yourself. I haven't gone with Breitling. Okay, um, but I, now that we've had the spoilers, so let's yeah. go to the next one. And this is my sort of hit me. Yeah, it's a bit of a stretch and um. Uh, you know, Enrico was saying he likes a Speedmaster, it's a milestone, it's a classic. I've gone with Amiga Speedmaster First Amiga in Space, which is a sort of more, uh, I guess, I'll, I'll pull up the picture here for you, Andy. Uh, First Amiga in Space, F O I S. F O I S, they, com they commonly call it. So it's got a, like a, a pandery dial and it's a bit sort of more vintagey looking yep. in some ways. Ooh. And but what I've metal is that? Sedna Gold. gold. Nothing says a Lovely. milestone like a gold watch. So maybe not every day, not as every day. Um, I believe he's self-employed, so he, he probably could. Yeah, but but also, Enrique, treat yourself. Yeah. What's um, the price on uh, on that guy? Oh, what is the price on that? That is my friend. Ooh, oh, God, I didn't write the price down. Oh, well, hopefully it's in the budget. Yeah, it is. It was just at the tip top. Um, tip top. I, I couldn't find American, but it's... Yep. It's around that sort of, sort of 20 low 20s. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I did a little currency exchange and had a, had a crack at it. I want to go to, I know I'm not meant to have favourites, yeah. but I've got favourites. Yeah, you do. This is my favourite. Um, and it's, the benefit is it's way under budget. It's like five to seven K. You can get it. It's, it's not in production anymore. So it leaves a bit of money for fuel. <laughs> Maintenance. Maintenance. Um, yeah, and, I, and just because you've got a budget doesn't mean you have to top it out. Mm. Um, because it, it, it fits the builds. 40 mil. Tick. Classic movement. Tick. Uh, steel, comes with bracelet, comes uh -huh. with, you know, really good legibility with a bit of a twist. Yep. Do, what, any classic movement. Actually, no, you've got it as well. It's a Zenith. i have got to take the, the drama out of it. The Zenith Rainbow Flyback El Primero. Oh, well, that's an interesting choice. Do you know the watch? I, I Funnily enough, I saw one uh, earlier today posted on Facebook. Yeah, so it is... It's funky. Um, yeah, it's mid... Uh, it's a mid-90s model, oh, actually. So it, yep. it predated, uh, here's for all the watch nerds out there, the dark days of Tarina Taff. Okay. Being the CEO of Zenith, he made some slightly too funky designs for mm -hmm. many people. But it's it's sort of got a dive bezel. Can you pull um, it up for me? Oh, wow, yeah. It looks a bit There's like... There's a lot of colour on that. Yeah, it looks a bit like a Sin Meta Rainbow. In, it's not, in so ways. it's not like a, uh, a Rainbow Daytona when we say no, Rainbow. It's, no, no, no. It's so, sort of... Ex kept to a, a single sub-dial. Yeah, well, there's a bit of colour on the dive bezel. The first yep. 20 is in, in sort of a ready orange and the one of the sub-dials has sort of like a regatta timer so uh, colour situation. It's just a bit bit interesting. So we're talking 1990s, obviously. What's the sort of going rate for one of those? Five to seven Aussie. Oh, wow. So, I mean, you know, it's a big spectrum of how nice it is and what, what comes with it. So he's got a lot of money left in that budget. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, wow. But, but it, if you want to just, uh, it's an El Primero, great pedigree, good name. It's just, you know, you don't need to go nuts all the time. Interesting. I mm -hmm. like it. And that's your favourite pick? It is. That's, okay. what I, that's what I'd get. But, okay. Um, I've gone. You got uh, one more? I, I've got, I've kind of got two. Um, I have one, but the one that I immediately thought of was um, the Seiko Spacewalk. What is that? Yeah, they made it again, I'm going to say early 2000s. Um, Robert Yarn on Fratello has got a good write-up of uh -huh. it. It's, it's super limited. It was made for this guy whose brother was an astronaut and he was like one of the first civilians in space. Wow. And they made this. So it's a Seiko. It's a spring drive. It sort of looks like the Landmaster. Okay, so it's a Seiko. It's going to be cheap? Uh, no, 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 no. Um, it's in I the budget? No, it's not. Uh, you can't get it. It's not in the budget. We had a look, and I, um, there's one. I think seventy thousand US. US. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but it's really cool. It's got a GMT. It's like super utilitarian, bullhead chronograph. That sort of spring drive chronograph layout. I'll link it up in the um, in the show notes. In the notes in the show notes in the show notes. And um, yeah, it's just a. It's it's got this 
funky bezel. I don't know if it's like tantalum or bronze or something. It's it's just a really cool looking watch. But we can't have that. So <laughs> I've gone something completely different. The Breguet Aaron Aval Chronograph Type 20. Oh, you very know, nice. Classic chronograph. Yep. Uh, great Breguet. Lamania based movement with a uh-huh. flyback, you know, functionality, a little bit of functionality added. It's... um. Quite small as well, 39 mil. It is, yeah. Where's big? Oh, it's got that spectrum. steel. Well, I mean, for a pilot's chronograph, yeah. I mean, yes, typically true. a bigger beast. That's the one with the, uh, the sort of smooth curve to the bezel. Yeah, it's sort of a, a brushed steel yep. dive, yep. elapsed scale bezel. Um, yeah, that's just a nice watch. It looks great on anything. It's just classic, certainly suitable for daily, but also a little bit. Special, you know, it's Brigo. Wow, those are some some great selections from both of us. I'm really excited to hear what Enrique thinks once this goes up, and we'll be sure to, to feed that back in. Do you reckon we've got something he likes? Yeah, I think so. Okay. And I think um I think I might be on the money with the uh, the Finissimo. <laughs> Just uh, the inside word. <laughs> Full disclaimer: we are we are oh. pretty pretty close friends. Oh yeah. So uh, if you uh, are listening to this and like you want that sort of lighthearted watch based bands in your mm. life based on you, how do you do it? Well, if you want to submit a watch matchmaker, mm. you email us at at OT the podcast. Hang on, hang on. It's just you email OT the podcast at gmail.com. Yeah. The at is weird at the start. Don't at me. <laughs> you email OT the podcast at gmail.com. Yeah. You give us your name, where you are in the world, what, what currency you you're paying, what do you like, what are you into, what do you own? Yeah. And we take it from there. Or you could, if you don't want to email, you could add us at ot.podcast on Instagram yeah you can slide into those DMs and you should already be following our our socials and liking and and subscribing this podcast sure Sure. thank you all for listening yep and thank you to Major Tom Media for producing this show thanks most of all to Enrico yeah thank you Enrico we'll see you guys next time